What up, Doe Hunters? I seriously has tweeted it. Therefore, it is truth. Gohan Piccolo is coming up next on Global. Shocker. Now, we were expecting this to happen a little bit sooner. Actually, you know what? If things were to have happened at the normal rate, it would have happened now, quite honestly. So we actually ended up getting the Goku Black Rosé a week earlier than a normal release would be. So as far as the Piccolo is concerned, the release is still actually right on schedule. So in today's video, we're just going to be taking a look at how things played out for JP in terms of content. I will not be doing a Dragonstone approximation video here. That's going to happen once the celebration is confirmed, courtesy of Dokkan in an official capacity. So let's just jump in here. We've got the full celebration details on JP. I've also got the timeline. As far as the timeline is concerned, what happened? So you see what happened was the Goku Black Rosé actually ended up dropping a week earlier than a normal release would take place. Typically, every banner has about a two week window for their banner to be the only one out there. But because Global is in this uncharted water sort of situation, we got a Global first one week earlier. So after one, just one week of Ribrian being out, Goku Black Rosé came out. So with two weeks now under the Goku Black Rosé's belt, this celebration will be ending around March 4th. Now, with this tweet dropping as early as it did, does this mean that the celebration is going to be starting sooner or later? Because if we follow the scheduling here, we would be getting the next Dokkan Festival on March 4th, which is another week away. I am dropping this video close to the end of February. So we should be getting the celebration March 4th, but things could change. Maybe they move it up a week and we instead have multiple celebrations one week apart i don't know how that's going to work so we'll have to wait and see like normally like i said it would be a two-week thing but we are approaching full synchro so maybe they're trying to load up on on seemingly back-to-back -back schedules on global just so that they can make room for a tanabata because tanabata does have a part one and a part two and so in my theory crafting for how the celebrations were supposed to shape up i did say that Tanabata would have to be compressed down into a two-week schedule, which is impossible considering that part one is two weeks, part two is two weeks. Con condensing all that into a two-week window means each one is happening in half the time. So maybe they're going to be accelerating the global release schedule just a little bit and have celebrations drop a one week apart so that they can maybe make room for a full-on Tanabata celebration. Because if that were to happen, it would have to happen before nine-year anniversary to fit a full-on part one, part two. So never say never. Don't rule out anything as possibility. At, at this point, all we know is patterns and we can assume based on patterns. But Dokkan likes to break patterns. They like to be illogical. So it's really just anyone's guess at this point. So regardless of whenever it comes out, it is going to be next. I did talk about in the Ribrian celebration that the login bonus was ending on the 29th, which is leap day. After that, there's no login bonus at all because Global doesn't have one for Rosé. Rosé is sort of a parallel celebration, so there has to be something. So I would imagine maybe the celebration starts on the 29th or the 30th. So anyway, let's go over what the unit does. Let's go over all of the events. I actually have the timeline here, so let's look at the timeline first. This is the JP timeline. So let's see, where is their celebration for Piccolo Gohan? Here it is. So October 31st is when these, uh, these two units came out, the Napa Vegeta and the Gohan Piccolo, as well as Ultimate Clash. And then if we go to November, we had Chain Battle. Yes, one of the final two Chain Battles to ever drop is going to be coming up next. This is the Nappa Chain Battle. And for this one, I believe this one doesn't require a Gohan Piccolo unit. So actually, this is going to be a big W from the strictly from the sense that you don't have to summon for the new unit in order to dominate in Chain Battle in terms of supports. So I know people have their feelings about Chain Battle. That's not what this is about. I'm just trying to say that if you stay away from the banner, which most people probably will, I don't believe Chain Battle will be negatively impacted as a result. I don't know if this is the most up-to-date chart, so when I do my Chain Battle video, of course, I will let you guys know, but at the moment, I believe that is the case. I will have to confer with the Chain Battle gods that are. So let's move on, ha. Huh? Where is the timeline? So, oh yes. Extremes the Awakening for the LR Nappa Vegeta. Well-deserved, finally. This is one of those EZAs that I desperately want. Because as much as I hate World Tournament, that stupid event is never going to go away. It is going to remain till the end of time, which means I want to have the most busted units possible to go through the World Tournament. Napa Vegeta is one of those units that I tend to use during World Tournament grinds, so I want this unit to be better. And yeah, it gets a lot better. Let's actually take a look at what he does. 
So Inhuman Deeds, 150%. Greatly raise attack and defense for one turn. Cause Colossal to all. That's all I care about for World Tournament. Actually, there's a little bit more in the passive. Massive raise attack and defense for one turn. Cause Mega Colossal and greatly lowers defense. Key plus two attack and defense plus 178. Key plus five launches an additional attack. That is a high chance of becoming a super attack when, key is, when HP is 78% or more. So this is also good because this will help you potentially launch multiple. I don't think you're going to need a second super attack on World Tournament anymore with this unit. But anyway... Plus an additional attack plus 78% within the same turn after evading an attack plus an additional attack and defense plus 78% per existing enemy. Dude, see this plus that equals OTK. Sometimes this Napa Vegeta has let me down in terms of OTKs on World Tournament, which is not good. You don't want to be spending more than one turn killing everybody. Plus an additional key plus one up to five every time the character delivers the final blow during battle. Oh, that's cool. Exchanges with Vegeta when conditions are met. Okay, exchanges with Vegeta when HP is 50% or less, starting from turn 4. Attack minus 50, evades enemy attack. Wait, what? This guy has a dodge? I literally didn't even know that he had that. Oh my god, he's had this before. I, I have been learning some very crazy things about units retroactively. I don't use this guy outside of World Tournament, therefore I never even realized he's got a guaranteed dodge. That's crazy. Okay, well that's cool. I mean, I guess that makes sense with his passive. That happens on turn three. Q. When he turns into Vegeta. This guy greatly raises attack and defense for one turn. Causes Colossal. Greatly lowers attack. Massively raises attack and defense for one turn. Causes Mega Colossal and massively lowers defense. Recovers 50% health. E plus four attack and defense plus 200. Plus an additional attack and defense plus 100 when HP is 50% or more. Guards all attacks for three turns from the start of the turn. Plus an additional key plus three attack and defense plus 180 when facing only one enemy. Plus an additional key plus three attack and defense plus 181. Attacking super class enemies. Key plus three attacks effective against all types when key is 18 or more. Crit on key 24. So I will probably never use this guy outside of the one showcase or something like that. But hey, it's better than what it was before, which is the most important thing. But like I said, World Tournament EZA is what matters the most, which is a big deal. Support memory boost. Okay, let's take a look at that. Let me pull up that event right here. God, wow, there's actually not a lot of stuff. I guess this fits in perfectly, right? The celebration doesn't have a lot of content. We got Clash. You got the, the pixel character stuff. You got the chain battle, which not many people care about. Extreme Z battle. Extreme Super Battle Road and new stage on Super Battle Road or support memory boost. So let's take a look at these. So if Global were to get the final stage of the Extreme Super Battle Road, that would be Saviors. And then that would also mean the end of the LR EZA series on Global. We will have caught up. We will have the LR Trunks EZA fully taken care of and yeah that will catch global up to JP which I think is also part of what we're trying to do so I don't know if they're going to drop this we just got extreme super battle road yesterday so maybe this doesn't drop this time around maybe this will drop during I don't know super saiyan 3 Goku Haruta Garden Dokkan festival maybe but there's only one left uh then for support memory boost what are we getting it's got to be this one cruel provocation I think it's like some Terrifying Conqueror's support memory boost. Let's see. Terrifying Conqueror's Wicked Bloodline, key plus two attack and defense plus 20% for three turns. Yeah, it's gotta be this one. This is what we gotta be getting. Uh, Nappa Vegito, get that out of the way. Chain Battle, okay. And then back here, Peton Battle, we already had that. We might get another one. Oh, Prime Battle, yeah. Prime Battle, Gohan, completely forgot about this. So there's gonna be a whole uh, Extremes the Awakening campaign for it. So these are the characters that you're going to have to have rainbowed and maxed out. So this will probably keep some of you guys occupied because this unit with his EZA, it's a prime battle unit. The amount of grinding that's going to be required is a lot. It's not nearly as bad as what it used to be because now the unit has an EZA, you know, ex extreme campaign and all that stuff. It is going to be much easier. So this will keep people occupied. Let's just quickly go over what this guy does. Exploding Rage causes Colossal, greatly lowers attack, raise attack and defense, Mega Colossal, massively lowers defense. E plus four attack and defense plus 59 when an ally whose name includes Goku is on the team. Plus an additional key plus four attack and defense plus 59 when there's an ally whose name includes Goku attacking in the same turn. Plus an additional attack and defense plus 58 when performing a super. Plus an additional attack and defense plus 58 high chance to crit if it's a super. Performs a critical hit of HP is 50% or less when performing an ultra super. E plus 12 attack and defense plus 58 and reduces damage received by 58% when HP is 50% or less once only. It's a prime battle free to play unit, so it's come. It comes with its limitations, but there you go. Uh, but like I said, extremes the area. You need 
Vegeta, who you also need for chain battle, by the way. This is a chain battle unit. You need Zarbon Dodoria. You need Guldo. I, I literally, all I could think of was Rhyme Style because there's a meme that Rhyme Style is Guldo. What is going on, Rhymester? Okay, so Guldo, Raditz, Raccoon, and Nappa. So this is the squad that you need to take on this event. Why? Because that's just how it is. Prime battle grinds are very annoying. And it is this, it is this crazy inception of free-to-play grinding. The sooner you guys catch up with all of these free-to-play units, the better off you're going to be in terms of keeping up with the prime battle grind and just free-to-play grinds in general. It's best not to be left behind. So take the time to do this. This might take you all week. And speaking of all week, why do I mention one week? Well, because probably by the time we start this Gohan Piccolo celebration, I would say give it about a week before we start getting hints and teasers or maybe some sort of an announcement for the upcoming Saiyan Day celebration. It was approximately around March 11th or 12th that we got our first hint for Super Saiyan God last year. We got that shot of, what was it? Was it Bulma's? Wherever they were celebrating Bulma's birthday, that patio, they, they had like a distant shot of it. It didn't show everything. It showed like the, the higher part of the image. But from there, a lot of people put together, it was Saiyan Day it, or it was God Goku. Then they showed another image that kind of furthered that so they will probably start to do something similar about a weekend. So in terms of those of you who might be compulsive summoners, you want to have one of every single unit or whatever, whatever your reason may be that you're thinking, hey, you know what? I am going to summon for this unit. Damn it. I want the unit. I need it. Keep that in mind. Give it one week, one week into the celebration. If we start to get hints towards Sand Day and it ends up being something crazy that you might not have expected or maybe you've wanted, that might help deter you from summoning. Because as far as what the unit does, well, actually, that, that'll be the final part of this video. Let's go over what the unit does. The unit is good, but it's just not what we need right now. And that's going to be kind of the recurring theme when it comes to all of these Dokkan festivals moving forward. These units are good, but the problem is Global just doesn't have the luxury of summoning on every single banner. Unless you're a whale or unless you're stupidly lucky, you can't afford to be summoning on every single banner if you're trying to have enough to weather the storm. That is nine year part one, nine year part two, Kanabata somewhere down the line in this schedule and worldwide download full synchro 2024 part one and part two there is so much stuff coming up that will blow these units out of the water that it's really not worth summoning for them even if they're good right now it's the same reason why I insisted that aside from hardcore universe 7 fans like myself summoning for int 1718 wasn't a good idea at the time but I did say the unit would massively appreciate in value when those Universe 7 EZAs dropped during the nine year anniversary. Hasn't happened yet on Global, but we now know what they're gonna be all about since JP just had it. So when 1718 comes back, they will be far more valuable. And the best part is they will not be the headliners. They will be the backup units that you summon for and you end up pulling. So that is why I think people are gonna have to really resist these. But let's just quickly go over what this does and we'll wrap up the video. Bond of Master and Disciple, Saiyan Saga, 170%. Extra 30 stats for Earthbred Fighters. This happens to be a 200% lead for Beast Gohan. Greatly raised attack and defense for one turn. Causes immense damage. E plus two, attack and defense plus 150. Plus an additional attack. Plus an additional attack boost by up to 150. The less HP remaining, the greater the stat boost. Plus an additional attack and defense plus 100 when supering. Reduces damage received by 40% when HP is 70% or more as the first or second attacker in a turn. Bond of Master and Disciple or Saiyan Saga category allies. Key plus two attack and defense plus 30. Superclass allies, excuse me. <laughs> I choked on some water. Superclass allies, key plus one attack and defense plus 30% for three turns as the third attacker in a turn. If HP is 70% or less at the start of the character's attacking turn or starting from the seventh turn from the start of battle, revives with 70% recovered by exchanging with Gohan when the character or an ally attacking in the same turn gets KO. So that's the Piccolo Sacrifice. That's what this is. So when Gohan is just Gohan by himself, massively raised attack and defense for one turn causes immense damage. Key plus two attack and defense plus 150, plus an additional attack and defense plus 100 when performing a super attack. And if HP is 58% or uh, more when performing a super attack. Wait, what? Did I miss that? Plus an additional attack and defense plus 100 when performing a super attack. And if HP is 58% or more when performing a super attack, plus an additional attack plus 100. That's what it was. Okay. Plus an additional key, plus 12, attack and defense, plus 300 when supering, and performs a crit for one turn from the start of the turn. Attacks effective against all types, starting from the third turn, superclass allies, key, plus two. Great chance to crit when there's a pure Saiyans category enemy. Dodges for one turn, 
and high chance to dodge starting from turn three when there's an ally whose name includes Goku on the team. Did you get all that? A lot of stuff there. The whole novel for you to read. Like I said, unit is good, not what we need right now. That's basically it. So try to survive for one week, but we'll talk more about it as we get the official confirmation, as we know what things are going to be coming up. We will discuss more and more about the upcoming celebration. But in the meantime, look forward to an easy amount of stones headed your way in the next week or so. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like down below. Let me know in the comments if you guys are looking forward to the Gohan Piccolo summons. Are you going to be summoning for this unit? Are you instead going to wait until we potentially see what's coming up for Saiyan Day or other things? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, be sure to subscribe for more dope content of the future and click the notification bell so that you'll let you know when I see more of my stuff. Do it! Thanks again. Stay tuned and I'll to Dokkan responsibly.